Coming up, a segment from KTWU, your source for public television. Afterwards, don't forget to visit ktwu.org to make a pledge to help make more local programming like this. In today's Plains People segment, we meet someone who represents a contemporary expression of what it means to be a Native American. We always had horses where I grew up. We were an Indian family that farmed and we took care of our own horses. And by taking care of our own horses when I was young, I learned how to do the feet. Perhaps sometime between the ages of 12 and 14, I did my own first horse. This is Miles with a Y. It's on there tight, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'm 73, and I still feel pretty comfortable of doing horses' feet. The shoe was set on, and, and after so many weeks, the hoof grows, and the hoof, the shoe has to be reset on the hoof. So they call them resets. My name is Smithy Benny Smith, and I'm, I'm a Cherokee Indian. I'm a fifth generation horseshoer. And my grandparents and my parents were all put on a roll. The government put us all on a roll. And when they put the Cherokee people on the rolls, they had to assign them a name. Well, we come from a whole, a long line of blacksmiths. Back then, a blacksmith was a horseshoer. In or a shoer, a horseshoer was a blacksmith. And so when they assigned the names, they dropped our Native American name, our Cherokee names on the rolls and gave us a name Smith and just dropped off the black. John asked me if I was still shoeing horses, and he asked me if I was still training horses. The service life of a farrier is shortened by the fact they have to strenuously bend over and pick up a horse's feet and do what they need to do with the foot. Perhaps by the time I was 60, I would have been finished doing horses if I had not been setting down. And my setting method of doing horses' feet probably increased my service life. I could have a, a hard day at the office and some dis, you know, disappointing things, but I could come out in the evenings and work with my horses and forget about that part of life for a while. And it's therapeutic, I really think it is. I have been working horses for people since the early 1970s here in Douglas County. So I have trained a lot of horses for a lot of people and I still, and I continue to do that. There's an old sayings about a horse and a person about human and they say there's something that is about the outside of a horse that is good for the inside of a man. They love to run and kick and cut didos. She kicked out that way and then she'll kick towards me 
You have to keep an eye on them because they'll run by and playful, in their playfulness, they'll, you know, direct a blow at you. The approach that I use for horses is the same thing that I use in approach to people. In our language, there is a saying that says, I'll just say it in our language, and it says, uh, That in our language means only approach after you have thought it over and over and over and over again. And it has a second meaning which says, only approach after you have calmed and quieted yourself and settled yourself. And that means approaching people. And then I will say, whoa, whoa. Whoa! 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 Whoa. Now, she will associate that verbal command with the fact that she's standing. Whoa. 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 And you'll see I won't use my extremities to reach for them. Horses are fearful of extremities, something that sticks out. But now she's going to, so, oh boy. Now you see, this is the first time we've done this. I told people that yeah, I heard about this horse whispering bit, and I said, I read up on the books, I listened to tapes, I saw some videos on horse whispering, you know, and I thought maybe I could do that as well. So I began to practice that a little bit, and the horses seemed to be responding to this very well. And so I thought I was really doing good with that, until one day, the vet came and he examined my horses and the vet says, your horses are deaf. <laughs> so that shot my big headedness about being a good horse whisperer. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa.